The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is John Millenthal. I'm a, uh, I work on the marketing uh, for iGive.com. I appreciate everybody joining us this afternoon if you're East Coast, this morning still if you're West Coast. Um, we are, uh, we're, we're really looking forward to having a good conversation today about, uh, about how iGive works and, and, and helping causes leverage this, this very cool technology. Uh, with me today is uh, Rob Grosshandler, he's CEO of iGive, and also on today's webinar is Jimmy Binns, who is our, uh, our cause uh, relations manager, and uh, both will be uh, talking today. And uh, mostly Rob, and then uh, if you guys have questions uh, as we go, we are opening this up to a question and answer period. If, so if you have questions, there is a uh, tab within the dashboard of your GoToWebinar program that's probably on the right side of your screen. And if you would type in your questions there when we get to the Q&A part of the, of the uh, presentation today, we will go through those questions, and Rob, at, Rob and or Jimmy will help answer any of the questions that you guys have. So again, uh, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. I'm going to hand this over to Rob to get started. Well, again, on uh, behalf of all of us here at iGive, thanks for joining us. Um, I get to do this uh, mostly because I've been told I have a, a face for radio. So you'll notice that there's no webcam, there's no, there's no live broadcast. The whole point of what we're doing here today is to make sure that everybody understands that um, they can use iGive to make their nonprofit as healthy as possible, and it's really, really easy to do. So some of the things we're going to cover today, um, a little bit more about iGive and, and how you use it and, and what it does. Hopefully we're going to cover a little bit about how iGive uh, benefits you and your cause. Uh, some simple ways to uh, utilize iGive. One of the things you're going to hear me talk about is that when you use iGive and you do it, what I would call properly, it's evergreen. It is you do it once and very little work needs to be done um, after you get it set up initially. Also going to talk a, a bit about uh, something brand new for us. Uh, most people haven't had a chance to see it. I'm not sure I've had a chance to go through, through it entirely. It's our causes.igive.com cause portal and it's still a work in progress so as you uh, see things we're looking for feedback we're always looking for feedback we have lots of tools that we've gathered from all over the iGive website um, and uh, we have brought them into one place to make uh, iGive even easier we hope and lastly and perhaps not least important is in April, we're doing something really cool, and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the uh, the end of our presentation. My guess is that this is going to take uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, I tend to talk fast. Um, if I talk too fast, Jimmy gets to throw paper at me. Uh, with that, I'm going on to the next screen. So, iGive has been around for a while, and we've been helping charities and causes uh, earn money because their shoppers shop online, their supporters shop online. So fundamentally, you being uh, a shopper, go shopping. Um, when you do, your charity or your cause gets money and it's all for free. So if I have 10 seconds, 15 seconds to tell people about what I give is, it's you shop. Your charity or cause gets money and it's all for free. Other pieces of the puzzle that we think are important are that it's really, really easy to use. And if it isn't easy to use, we've done something wrong in explaining it. So if you ever feel that it isn't easy, we want to know about it. Secondly, it's important that it's automatic. That is, people want to help your cause or charity, but they don't want to spend a lot of energy or time or brain power doing it. So we've done things to make it very, very automatic. Talk a little bit about it being evergreen. That is, once you get it in place, once your supporters are using iGive, um, it just stays around and it keeps helping. On occasion, it might help to, to poke them in the side a little bit and say, hey, you know, remember iGive because this is helping us and we do things like that as well. 
But generally, once somebody is set up, it stays set up. And last and, and definitely not least, it is free. It doesn't cost your organization anything. It doesn't cost your supporters anything. It truly is free. The stores pay for it all. So let's talk about the, the person who's really most important in all of this. And we call her Betty. 85% uh, of the people who use iGive are women. Uh, they happen to be 25, 30 years and older. Uh, they either have pets or uh, children, um, sometimes at home, sometimes not at home. Sometimes they consider their spouses to be pets or children. These, these webinars are really weird because that was one of those lines where I expect laughter coming back at me and I'm not even hearing, you know, anything. So anyways, Betty is the most important piece of the puzzle. I give is less important, the stores are less important, the causes are the second most important important thing in this puzzle. The average shopper using iGive generates about thirty to a hundred bucks or more a year. And the reason we, we have average being this this large spread of numbers is there's a real sort of difference. There are what we call super shoppers out there. And they do a hundred, two hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars a year for their causes. But on average, average, it's about thirty dollars per year to the cause. Again, all free. So I give is simple. It's a way to help your charity or your cause financially. It's no cost to you or your supporters. What you see is indeed what you get. That is, when we say 2% goes to your charity, it's 2%. So you go spend $100, 2 bucks goes to your charity. And we do it for those 1,400 stores. And we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail. And it's free because the stores pay for it all. One of the questions I've often received is, it sounds sort of too good to be true, right? I don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, it's really easy. We'll talk a little bit about that. The stores pay for uh, I give pay and, and help support causes for a bunch of reasons, and not every store does it for exactly the same reasons. But generally, you can the stores do it because the shoppers like the stores. They feel good about shopping at Macy's, or they feel good about shopping at HSN, or they feel good about shopping at Amazon. When they feel good about things, they tell their friends. So it turns out that when stores support shoppers via iGive, it's a very effective marketing mechanism. And also very important, when shoppers are supporting a cause that they care about, typically a cause close to their heart or close to home, they tend to spend more. That brings joy to the heart of uh, just about every retailer out there. So we're going to talk a little bit about what Betty sees when she uses iGive and why it's so easy and why it's so automatic. And if you take a look at the screen, this is a, a browser and, and uh, the iGive button is something you get when you sign up for iGive and we'll talk a little bit more about how you get the iGive button. But you sign up once and you have iGive hopefully forever. So you have iGive and it's installed as part of your computer browser and you're going to see two things. You're going to see this little icon right here. And when you go to a participating store, and there's over 1,400, you're going to see the I Give button in the bottom right-hand screen. That's it. We're going to go a little bit further, and we're going to come back to this page and talk a little bit more about the details of it. But now let's talk a bit about why Bob's favorite cause, or Jimmy's favorite cause, it's her favorite cause. Indeed, she can be supporting cause A, and somebody else in her household can be supporting cause B. So she goes to shop. She sees exactly what she's going to earn when she makes a uh, percentage. The store learns that she is supporting a cause. She doesn't. The store doesn't know what cause it is, but the cause, the store does know that this person is, is important. So sometimes the store offers up specials for Betty. Maybe it's free shipping. Maybe it's buy one, get one free. Each store gets to determine what they're doing. The store does not know who Betty is, and the store does not know what cause Betty is supporting. So Betty goes and makes a purchase. At HSN, that's 2%. That's 6 bucks on a $300 purchase. 
HSN sends us money, we send you money, and then you do it all over again. It's that rinse and repeat part we think is really important. So IGA has been around for a while, and we've grown it to the point where this is uh, this is working for a lot of different causes. There are about 350,000 people who get emails from us every month. There are about 1,400 retailers who are participating, and there are about 35,000 causes being supported by those 350,000 members. Now, the big numbers are really interesting, but what really counts is how much you can expect at your organization to get. And that math is easy as well. How many people do you have who are online and shopping? Multiply that number by 30, and that's about how much money you should be seeing from iGive uh, every year. All right, let's, let's look again at what iGive means and how it, how it benefits you. One, it's free. You get listed, it's free. It's free for your supporters. The money you receive comes in the form of a check, and you can use it any way you want. Another thing that we're seeing that's really interesting is that many causes become their own supporter, right? They go shopping for office supplies, or maybe they have to send uh, somebody on a trip to a, a conference. They buy their trips via Expedia and get money back because they send someplace. So a cause can be its own supporter. There's some of the things that we do, and we're going to talk more about that, about making it easy for you to spread the word. Uh, lastly, I've uh, been talking about It's Evergreen, and it really does add up. So we send out thousands and thousands of checks every month from anywhere from $25 to $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 per month. Bigger organizations get bigger checks. Smaller organizations get smaller checks, but it's always free and it's always easy. So let's go back to this I Give button and talk a bit more about what's happening here. So uh, Betty gets to see that it's active. If she clicked on that, uh, she has a menu of things that she can do, one of which is go to Amazon. Amazon's a very popular store at I Give. Another thing she could click on is the, uh, the button itself. And when she does that, she's going to see specials that are designed just for her because she's an I Give member. It happens automatically, and it happens because she typed in, oh, HSN into Google, and she saw that she could click on the little icons next to it. Or she typed HSN into her browser, and when she gets to HSN, she'll see the little I Give button. Go back up the screen. The I Give button right there. She's going to see that. Other ways we make it easy for your supporters to help. We have an app, the iPad app. It works really well. It's fast. It's simple. It's sort of a streamlined version of iGIF. So if you have supporters who are now tablet-centric, uh, the iPad app uh, is a really easy way for them to, uh, on the go, uh, support your particular cause. Uh, later this, uh, this year, um, I would expect that you might see an Android app from us as well. I don't talk futures, I'm not promising anything, but we're spending money on it. Now, the most important thing you do as a cause is spread the word. And once you spread the word, and we're going to talk about how you spread the word, your supporters get to join iGive to support your organization. And if you spread the word in the easiest way possible, which is to send them what we call a join link, they're going to end up on a screen like this. It's going to say who it is that they're going to be supporting when they join. It's going to talk about any kind of specials that are happening when they join in April, for instance. They can find out more about other members. They can find out the list of retailers. They can see even how it works. We ask for very little information as part of the registration. We want to know first name, last name, and a password and their email address. On occasion, we may ask for zip code. That's it. It's very simple, very easy. It takes 30 seconds, maybe, to, uh, to register for, for IGIF. So 
That's simple. Now, let's talk about how you get those members to sign up for iGive. The single best thing that causes are doing is hooking up their Facebook page with iGive. When you do that, iGive on a schedule that you control will put reminders on your Facebook wall that helps your supporters know that iGive is out there and can help. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to remind people that they're already helping. It's a wonderful way to uh, get people who are new to your organization. And it's a wonderful way to thank people that they're already helping. Other ways we talked about, the registration link, the, the join link. Um, we send out monthly recaps. We put notices in checks. If you don't have a Facebook page, that's okay. Uh, we were quite successful prior to Facebook being a thing. But if you do have a Facebook page, once you've set it up, it just keeps going. It is the single best thing you can do. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's your fan page. Right. There are other ways that we make it easy for you to um, get your supporters signed up with iGIF. So you take one of those uh, cute iPads that's hanging around and you use the iGIF Party app. And here's an example of what it looks like on an iPad or a laptop. And it's designed so that you can really quickly, uh, 20, 30 people in a room, you take it to a party, a board meeting, a fundraiser, a silent auction, you, you set it up, and 10 people, 20 people, 30 people sign up, and they'll receive an email from us that has all of the instructions necessary for them to make this work on their own personal iPad or their own personal computer. We were talking about this before, but we're seeing, it's one of those, those funny things. We never really thought about it, but recently we went out and we interviewed a bunch of uh, causes, trying to find out what we could do better, find out what we're doing poorly. And most of them said, we're buying stuff at Staples and Office Max and Target uh, that help the cause. And it adds up. We have uh, one person. Uh, who works for a cause, it's a reasonably big cause, they're receiving a check from iGive of about $1,000 a month because she's buying everything for uh, the office. We have another person who looks exactly like that, way, looks exactly like that, doesn't buy for her, for her charity, buys for her business, and is, as I say, generating $6,000 a year because they go through a lot of office supplies. We talked a bit about some of the things that we're doing to make this easier for you. So if you go to causes.igive.com, and you don't need to go right now, you can, you can go after this is all over, you'll see our latest bit of, uh, of website magic. Uh, it is new. Uh, there are still some rough edges, and as you see rough edges, we would love to hear about it. But some of the things you're going to find there is, one, it's a lot better looking than the old way of doing things. It's uh, uh, John and his team uh, have done just a, a terrific job of organizing information in a way that's uh, more intuitive, prettier, and easier to use. Some of the things you're going to find there are motivational stories, like cause success stories. Uh, each month we talk about a super shopper, somebody who has found ways to help her cause. Uh, in, again, it doesn't cost her anything. It doesn't cost the cause anything. And how she's doing it, what it is that she's buying, and perhaps how you might go about finding that per person in your uh, group of supporters. Usually what we find is that people don't know about iGIF. So half the battle, three quarters of the battle, is simply letting people know. Other things you'll find there are the uh, an RSS feed from nonprofit industry. So if you want to keep up on of the nonprofit news. It's going to be an easy way to, uh, to figure that out. So you're going to see also flyers and brochures. We have lots of things that you can hand out either in paper form or in electronic form. So that was why the digital materials. We have lots of logos, ads, and, and uh, 
a pre-written copy so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we always have new tools coming in, and we have a place just for you to figure out what's new and, and uh, sweet about what iGive is doing. Uh, sometimes we uh, pat ourselves on the back. Uh, we're not above doing that. Uh, more importantly, I think, is when other people are talking about how they're using um, iGive or how they're using the nonprofit world, not necessarily associated with iGive at all. Uh, and then uh, little things about uh, uh, causes talking to other causes. So I'm going to go on to the next screen here. Here's some of the pieces in the toolkit. So you have these flyers and brochures. Um, most of these are designed to allow you to customize them easily or they come to you already pre-customized with your cause name on them. So where it says your cause, it would actually say your cause name. Uh, so maybe you're a, a pet rescue, maybe you're helping fight some terrible disease, whatever it is, uh, these customize themselves so that you're talking in a very personalized manner to your constituencies. Uh, banner ads as well as copy for uh, email and, and paper newsletters. People still send those out. So we've got our biggest membership promotion going on in April, and I'm going to talk a bit more about that, but I wanted to show you what some of the things happen when people use Facebook. So I am going to experiment here and draw across the screen. Now, if I've done this right, this is IGIVE's Facebook wall, and these are some of the things that people are saying on our wall about iGive and their interaction with iGive. And they're saying it on their own walls as well. So, for instance, Ellis Goddard here is saying, uh, is talking to uh, uh, their causes, the Mockingbird Foundation's uh, constituency, and talking about with iGive, your online purchases can support music education. Uh, here, Shannon is talking about the Radiant Peace Foundation is being helped. So, these are examples of ways that uh, folks are leveraging iGive and leveraging the tools that they already have to get the word out. So moving that off the screen, back to our April promotion. We're really, really excited about this. iGive has been growing by leaps and bounds, and on average, those 35,000 causes and 350,000 uh, members, we see in, in the, on the good days 500 people, 750 people, uh, registering to help causes. We want to make it even bigger. We want every cause to grow, and we want every cause uh, to benefit as I Give grows. When I Give grows, we're able to negotiate better deals with the charities. We're able to uh, build better websites. We can bring out Android apps even faster. So the, we've got a challenge going. It's if we can get a thousand people a day. To register, and we think we can do that. We do that some months, but not April usually. We're going to give each and every one of those members' causes five bucks for that new member. So if your cause gets 10 new people signing up in April, and they all try the I Give button through July 15th, that's 50 bucks free. They don't have to buy anything, they don't have to do anything more, they just have to try the I Give button. That's assuming that we're able to beat our goal of 1,000 people a day. As I say, we do 500 to 750 people a day in, uh, in a normal good days during good months, so it's a bit of a stretch goal for us. It's not a for sure thing, but it does, and it does mean that you need to get out there and spread the word. When you do, it's going to help all of us. Oop, wrong, I hit the button on the wrong page. There we go. So, so, in conclusion, it's a numbers and marketing game. Like most marketing, it is about frequency. It's about the tone you use. It's about simply doing it. It's a little push at the very beginning. We're giving you, with a $5 uh, challenge, we're giving you a reason to push this. And so when you tell your supporters uh, that this is going to help, it's going to help no matter whom they support. It's going to help your organization. Just get started, and we take it from there. Right? So Facebook and Twitter, our emails uh, that go, our opt-in emails that go out each week, all of these things help to keep I Give Evergreen for your organization.
One of the things that we've learned over our many years in business is that we have to be very, very respectful of people's preferences. That is, if somebody wants to receive an email from us, we let them receive an email. But if they don't want to receive an email, excuse me, we have ways for them to opt out of just about every communication that I give sends. We also care about the frequency, so someone can choose to receive only the monthly uh, special alert newsletter, or they can receive something from us uh, every week if they want. Uh, and lastly, and, uh, but again, not, not least, is ask for help. I've got Jimmy here sitting with me, and he loves being able to uh, have conversations with uh, causes about the ways they can help uh, maximize I give or sometimes we haven't done our job as well as we want and you have a question we have loads of FAQs and a, and a help system we think that is that is second to none but sometimes you have a question that isn't answered specifically by um, our knowledge base and uh, Jimmy and, and his team are there to help with that as well and sometimes we just like to hear that it worked right so you send out an email to a hundred people and 25 signed up and it worked really, really well. We want to learn about that as well. And of course, we're always looking for super shopper stories. We're always looking for things to put in our blog. So the, uh, the cause, the, 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 our support portal, support.igive.com, is the, the first place of, uh, of help. It's an email-based system because we find that it's much, much faster, much more effective, and much more cost efficient to do it that way. But on average, during business hours, both coasts, we're responding to people in less than 15 minutes. So if you have a question, try us out. See what happens. Now it's time for questions and answers. I talked for 25 minutes. I doubt that I covered everything important. Uh, so please uh, use the uh, the interface uh, to ask those questions. And uh, John, I believe what we're going to have happen is you're going to read the question, uh, and we're going to uh, attempt to uh, to answer them. That is correct. All right. So let's uh, let's get started with that. Well, so the stores pay. The, what the question is, um, how does I give make money? And I give is a for-profit business, and the stores pay us something on top of what you see. So what you see is what you get when HSN says 2% uh, is going to your charity. That 2% goes. And HSN pays us something uh, apart from that. That way, we're not a charity. We're not competing with, uh, with our causes for donations. Uh, it is a very clear relationship uh, between the three parties involved between I give the charities and uh, the retailers. Thanks, uh, thanks, Rob. So here's a question about I or about uh, Amazon Smile. A couple of people have asked. Um, obviously, they've heard about Am Amazon Smile donating a half a percent to a customer's uh, of their customer's purchase. Can you use both programs? So. Amazon tells us you can, um, but we're unable to confirm that it works. Amazon is the uh, the big gorilla, and they're wonderful people, great great place to go shopping, uh, but they keep things very close to their chest and don't give us sufficient data so that we can confirm that they work together. Uh, you will note that if you use Amazon via iGift, uh, that the amount that goes to your cause is larger uh, than, than than that which Amazon gives you. So to be cautious, I don't try to use smiles.amazon.com, but it may work. Amazon says it does. There's no way to confirm it. Okay, here's a more of a technical question from one of the causes. Uh, she has a problem that when they clear their computer's cache, the I give button disappears. What should she do about that? Because she doubts that when people clear their cache, that they'll go back and redo the, the button. So if, if, they, if they clear their cache, um, the button actually shouldn't disappear. Uh, it, it's designed to remember where you're at. It may be 
uh, that the, those people, after they clear their cache, will have to log in again. Uh, but that's all that is supposed to happen. And if that's not happening, uh, please reach out to us at support.igive.com and uh, we'll look at it more closely. Thank you. Here's another question. How many emails are sent automatically to each member per month? How frequently and can they opt out? I think you've answered some of that, but maybe it's worth uh, reiterating. So they only have to opt out once. Right, so you, you go into iGive and you tell us which emails you wish to receive and which emails you don't wish to receive. Um, and that then means that each person receives a differing number of emails. So person A may receive six a month and person B may receive one a month. Um, if you are a frequent shopper, um, you will receive more because we send you confirmations every time a store uh, confirms to us that you have um, made a purchase. Another way of answering that question is if you don't do any shopping and you don't opt out of anything, generally you will receive one email from us a week. And in some months you may receive an additional email. So call it five or six in the course of a month if you make no purchases and you don't opt out of anything. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have a variety of questions, and, and sometimes even answering technical questions uh, in a large audience can can lead to additional uh, additional questions. So John's asked me, "Do I want a, a specific question about orbits?" and you know, I'll put my geeky hat on and do my darndest, uh, but I'm a, I talk for a living. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm, I may not be the right person. That's why I have Jimmy here. So, okay, so, so you want to hear this question about Orbit? Sure, let's give it a shot. Uh, uh, Kelly is asking, she's, she's tried to book with Orbits before using iGive, um, and she has noticed some performance issues when trying to book a trip with Orbits. Is this unusual? Uh, I would say it is, um, and if it's specific to orbits, that's just weird. If, when we see performance issues, it's because somebody is on a dial-up connection or a satellite connection. We have about 40,000 people who use the IGIV button on any given day, um, and generally we don't see performance issues. Once again, um, Jimmy and his support team lead a lonely life, so if you have that kind of a question and you have a specific thing, drop an email, to, you drop a support ticket to support.igive.com and we'll look at it. We're not saying you're not having a performance issue, but it's not, it's, it will be specific to you, it's not a general thing. Thanks Rob. Yeah, here's another question. Is there a place to find embed code so that visitors can sign up by clicking through from our website? For clicking through the yes. website. <laughs> very, very simply, yes, you'll find you'll find that kind of stuff on the portal. Yes, and having having done the portal, I can tell you there is lots of embed code for all those buttons and banners and stuff. Um, another question: How often do automatic Facebook posts go on a member's Facebook page if they link to it? Uh, again, I believe we manage that on a per-member basis, and I'm going to defer to Jimmy uh, to to tell me how often that might be. The Facebook posts. Facebook posts. Well, the Facebook posts happen based on the criteria you place. If you say post to Facebook every day, it will post every day, once a week, once a month. And then depending on the other options you've chosen, such as post when we get a check or post if a member has made an extraordinarily good purchase, uh, those may happen on the same day. So your daily post and the check post might happen on the same day just from coincidence. So fundamentally, I give communications are not one size fits all. Um, wherever possible, as, as I mentioned, we, we try to do this uh, 
respect your desire for frequency and tone. Another question about the mobile devices. Is there going to be an I give button for the mobile devices? Um, not worth talking about yet. Okay. Uh, this, is a, this is an interesting question, kind of a philosophical one. How do you handle people who are afraid of the internet, especially leery of shopping online? How do you make them feel secure of what they're doing? That's, a, that's a, actually a great question. Um, and Jimmy, Jimmy um, deals with it all the time. It's quite, it's quite a popular question. We have in our knowledge base an article that gives a couple of recommendations for those people who are internet shopping leery. Uh, one of our advices is to create a separate email account that is only used for internet shopping because regardless of how protective everyone can be, if you shop and you give your email to someone, the store is going to want to send you another offer. You will receive what lots of people may determine as spam. Their, their fear is being spammed. We do not spam. I give will never sell anyone's email address for any reason. And we also give you the ability to limit what email comes from us. But in terms of being a smart and wise shopper, sometimes having a separate email account, when like a Gmail or a Yahoo are easy to create, you can create a one that all you'll know that all those offers will go into one place. There's, there's another way to answer that question as well, which is, um, it may not be worth your while to try and um, sway someone's opinion who is dead set against shopping on the internet. And you may be better off spending your time um, finding other supporters who are interested, who are already uh, shopping on the internet. But that's a, that's a judgment call and varies with uh, situation to situation. And as far as tracking is concerned, I mean, in, in order for iGive to work, it, it does need to track the fact that you went to that store. Some virus protection softwares will trigger by that action, and it's all right to say, yes, I want iGive to track, knowing that you're not revealing any other information than that you are an iGive member. Thank you. That actually got to a little bit of, of a question that another person asked, but uh, playing off of their, the, the additional question that, that Tom has asked here. Um, Rob, talk again about the difference between the icon up on the right-hand side of your browser and the icon that's in the lower right-hand part of your browser. All right. I'm going back to my visual aids. There's my visual aid. Okay, so the icon in the upper right-hand corner, it, it, it depends on which browser you use. Sometimes it's over here uh, in IE or, or uh, Firefox or I don't know where they put it in Safari. But this icon is Rob? And I'm using, I'm in Chrome, I'm going to click on the seed icon, and it has a pull-down menu that does all sorts of wondrous things. The most brings you right to Amazon, but it can bring you to your stats or to the cause dashboard, etc. But let's go to a store, let's go to HSN. And now I'm going to HSN, and you'll see that the seed icon is still there and nothing has changed. But the I give button is now in the bottom right hand corner. And on some websites it's in the way. So I can make it go away by clicking show, uh, hide I give and go back and, hide, and show it. The other thing it does for you, I'm going to click the button itself. Lo and behold, we have um, information about HSN. Sometimes there are exceptions. So it's 2% on most things, but it's 
1.6% on clearance items. You can't use uh, coupons that we didn't provide you. And if you use a gift certificate, it doesn't count. So, but you, you, when you buy, I'm sorry, when you buy a gift certificate, it doesn't count. When you use a gift certificate, it does count. And here are some of the great specials. Oh, please do not. Um, I should need to remind, remember that. So <laughs> that's more on the I give button in real life being really used. Great. Um, what does a cause have to do to register? as a cause? Uh, they ha I'm going to let Jimmy answer that one because he deals with it every day. When you, it has to be a member of iGive that lists a cause. iGive does not put causes out there on our own. So a member will search first for a cause and find that it's not there and give them the option to Jimmy, you're breaking up a bit. And there's the, the search piece of all of that. It's about five minutes uh, to list a cause. Uh, the, the really the most important things are uh, an address that we can mail a check to and an email address that we can send communications to. It is also not necessary for a cause to be a 501c3 or to provide us any kind of account numbers. A cause, we define a cause as an organization of people that are able to raise money to do good. We could be our baseball team down the, the Little League team, or we can be a large, massive 501c3 organization. As long as how the check is written and how the cause is listed can be cashed by your bank and we see that you're doing good, you can be a cause that I give. And, uh, and I'm sorry, Jimmy, you, you, you cut out a little bit at the beginning, so I just want to make sure that the group here knows. As an individual leader ah. of your cause, go to the registration and register yourself as a person and list your cause that you Correct. have leadership of, and that will put your cause into the, into the system. Correct. Correct. Uh, here's a, a question. Someone is going to be switching to Windows 7, obviously, because Windows XP is going to be not supported anymore. Um, will this person have to reapply for membership, or will it automatically transfer over to the Windows 7? Seems like we're having a little bit of sound difficulty here. Well, there you go. You're back now. Uh, I'm back. Yeah. Try not to. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, we didn't. I didn't do anything. This, oh. this, this was technology without my screwing it up. <laughs> Any further questions, John? Yes. Okay. All right. You keep on going in and out. I'm sorry. I don't know if the uh, I'm not seeing any indication of that. Okay, so maybe it's just on my side. Yeah. Um, okay. Once iGive is connected to our Facebook page, is there a way to opt out of the automatic posts? So if they've opted in already and said that they want to do the Facebook thing, can they opt out? My answer is yes, and Jimmy will tell you how. By going to the same process of setting it up, you will then go to a screen that lets you edit and change what you have set. Very good. Is 
just reading the question here real quick. Okay. If your cause has a million Facebook fans, how many I give participants should we be enjoying if we market correctly? I love the word enjoy. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Um, let me, I can do some research and find out about that, but that's a question that I've never been asked before. Uh, and Jimmy's shaking his head no. Uh, let us know who you are and we will, we will make our best guess. Very good. Um, and just to, just to uh, get back to that Windows 7 thing, Kimberly with your group, Rob, uh, responded to me saying that the membership stays active. There may be a need to reinstall the button. So just something to keep in mind. It's probably just based on your own settings. IGive.com slash button cures most of those kinds of ills. Here we go. Uh, here's another question. I've registered causes for two different churches. My dashboard shows the current church, but, but when I shop, the other church name pops up as my cause. How do I change that? Um, if you're doing it in the same browser, uh, that one has me confused. I'm going to ask Jimmy. Repeat, repeat the question, John. So this is a person that has registered She's registered two causes. Um, so, oh, which, to administer two causes. You know, she goes shopping at one. It shows the right. name. You know what? We'll we'll take that one offline and we'll respond to her in particular. Very good. Thanks for your question, Jill. Um, is there any way for the cause to know whether a supporter has intentionally or unintentionally uninstalled their button? Is the cause alerted to that at all? Under cause administration from the cause dashboard, you can see whether or not your members have a working button or not. There is a yes or a green check mark next to their name if their button is reporting and working as it should. Great. Uh, one more question about Amazon.com, how do I know that the Amazon shopping is getting reported to iGive? Great question and no very satisfying answer. Um, Amazon only reports to us what a charity has, has received, not what an individual has received. So we have no way of really knowing if a particular person made a particular purchase. It's uh, very frustrating. Uh, we have no doubt that 99.9% .9 of the time we are getting uh, we are getting reporting. I have to do a lot of shopping myself uh, at Amazon and it all comes through. But there is no way to do anything other than trust Amazon. Um, and we're at the uh, the 150 mark, uh, and I would love to know if there are any final questions out there. John has done the same thing as asked you that way. Uh, I do have one other. First of all, let me let me just mention to those who who uh, may not have gotten on earlier, this presentation will be made available at causes.igive.com. The attendees of this. Uh, presentation today will be alerted when it is made available at the uh, at the website. Um, final question here. Uh, I've had supporters sign up incorrectly with mistakes in their email address, etc. Is there any way that I, as the cause, can help correct these problems? Um, not really. Uh, you can tell us you know, just drop an email to, to go into support and, and tell us about it. Or the simpler way is for them just to re-register. And they can fix it themselves. Got it. 
And how would, how, how would you suspect that that person would know that they didn't register themselves correctly? Um, the, the most common mistake would be that they do not have a cause selected. Bad email, I guess. Or bad email. So a bad email, so a bad email, <laughs> they're not going to get any communications from us. And they'll know at that point. Right. Yep. And, you know, when you first sign up, there's two or three emails that you will get from us. Um, and if you don't get any email, then we don't have the right email address. Very good. The cause administrator can also see whether or not emails are being delivered successfully to an individual. Great. And uh, one, one last question that came through. And start, sorry, Anastasia, I missed it before. Um, Anastasia is having a, a fundraiser soon. Where can she find information that allows people to sign up on the iPad? Or at least on the party uh, app. The party app. Um, John, you just, you just went and, and used the party app. Where do you find the party app? Me, John? Yeah, you, John. Yes, you go to causes.igive.com and you will find the party app under the digital materials section of the website. When you log in, when, when, when you're logged in as, as, your, uh, you know, as, as the cause and the member, it will automatically assign that registration link when you pull that up on your, uh, on your iPad device or on your lap, laptop that you have at your fundraising event. That link that your supporter uses automatically is associated with your cause. So they'll get an email later saying you're, you're signing up for iGive on behalf of ABC Cause complete the process here. Well, I would love to take this opportunity to thank all of you for attending. Uh, this was our first webinar. I hope it went well. If you found that we uh, were lacking in some way, please let us know. Uh, I am again offering our services. We, uh, we love answering questions via uh, support.igive.com. So thanks to Jimmy and John and the rest of the teams in Columbus and Chicago and wherever, uh, and have a great rest of the afternoon. Thanks, Rob.